Um, you represent Florida, which is wide open. The schools are open, the businesses are open. Can you understand the frustration of business owners and parents, in fact, uh, where their children are not allowed to go to school in states like New York, where there is so much frustration and it seems like, you know, the restrictions to try to prevent people from getting the COVID seems to be keeping people from making a living? Yeah, there's a couple things in play here. Number one, I think the overall majority of people understand this virus is a problem. There's things yep. we have to do to be careful about it and try to mitigate against the risk. And there's things that, you know, we're going to have to restrict and be able to do, uh, not be able to do. That said, there are some things that you're going to have to be able to do no matter what the risk is. And one of those is make a living. People right. have to make a living. Yeah. They have to work. They have to provide for their families. And to do that, they need their kids to be in school. And, and their kids, by the way, also need to be learning. They can't afford, you know, you can't afford to take a year off until we get a vaccine and not learn. So our job in public service, whether it's in local, state, or federal, government, is to provide the resources and the pathways so we can do those things. Now, the second problem here is the hypocrisy, okay? The hypocrisy of during the campaign, when Trump had a rally with a bunch of people that was irresponsible. After the campaign, when people took to the streets dancing uh, in huge, you know, in the crowds, tightly packed crowds celebrating because of Biden, nobody said a word. And, and it's the same with the stuff now. You've got these people that own a business that, are, that put their whole life's work into it. And you've got some guy behind a Zoom camera on television who gets paid to work from home, lecturing them about how they need to close their business and, and not work and not employ people uh, until they tell them it's OK to do it. So it's an enormous amount of hypocrisy and people are tired of it. Yeah, the Denver mayor told people don't travel for Thanksgiving and then he uh, flies to Mississippi to see his family. You've got Governor Gavin Newsom, you know what happened there at French Laundry, Laundry at the restaurant. The Austin mayor told people to stay at home on a video. Turns out that video was recorded down in Mexico when he was on a vacation. Oops. So you're right about the hypocrisy. And I've heard it said every paycheck is essential. How do you pay your house payment? How do you pay for food for your kids or college without a paycheck? It's all essential. Um, and well, the, the biggest hypocrisy here and, and in places like New York is they arrest someone for trying to work, but then they raise thousands of dollars and ask others to give money to bail out people who are committing arson and burning police cars and vandalizing cities. So think about that. You, you're going to demonize people because they decide they're going to work, but you are going to help bail out the heroic arsonists and looters. It's ridiculous. It's crazy stuff. And that's what people are tired of. Yeah. Brian, you take the next question. So a couple of things. You were in charge of the PPP program. I think you started it uh, where people were told you got to stay home to stay safe. So you're going to get a paycheck anyway. Number one, is there more money coming? Why isn't all the money been spent? And number three is the word of a bipartisan $900 billion uh, stimulus package was signed off by Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi yesterday. Would Marco Rubio also get behind that? Well, let me start with the, the, the money. It's not that it wasn't all spent. Every business that was eligible to apply was able to apply, and there was money allocated left over. That means we didn't spend all the money, which is good, because we're able to take part of that money and use it for something else. We don't have to do new spending, which would be deficit spending. Uh, uh, in terms of uh, the $900 billion, look, I think it's a great start, and we can build on it. I think on the PPP portion of it, it goes a long way, but it, it, it's missing, you know, a, 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 it's missing some money, and we're going to find ourselves if we don't put enough money in the set aside enough money in the PPP program, then by February or March, we're going to have a situation where you have small businesses who need it but can't get it because the money ran out. So we want to avoid that sort of cliff that we faced the last time it was put. So together. you want more than 900 billion? No, no, no. That's for the 900 billion is for the total package. I okay. think the, the PPP portion was about 200 they put in there. We really need closer to 259, 259 billion. Now, it may not all get spent because understand the only businesses that will qualify this time around are ones that have can demonstrate a 25% revenue reduction. You know, they've lost 25% or more of their revenue. So we've limited who can get it to the ones who really need it. But, yeah. but you know, a lot of businesses now either they're not allowing you to operate or, or, you're at the mercy of market conditions. I mean, you basically got political leaders telling people, don't go out, don't go shopping, don't right. go eat at restaurants, don't travel, don't go here, don't go there. So that, even if they allow you to open, no one's coming because they're being right. told not to. So how do these guys stay afloat? You're gonna have a lot of small businesses go out of business forever if we don't do some step up and help it. We should have done it a long time ago. And the Democrats play political games with it. You know what, Senator, you just perfectly set up this soundbite with your governor. Here's Ron DeSantis.
All businesses are open. We've had things like theme parks, beaches open for months and months. We have schools open. Uh, we have sporting events. And um, I think that for me, I think as you alluded to, a lot of these lockdowns have been very ineffective. Uh, they have huge negative consequences. And my view is that everybody's essential. Who's government to say that your job is not essential? I think some of the stuff in March and April uh, uh, didn't work. Um, I think you have to let people earn a living. And it's really not even government's role to say who, who could pick and choose. So but that's the problem. In some localities, the people in charge, whether it's a city or a state, they are figuring out who gets to win and lose. Yeah, and look, it's, it's part, part, part of the thing like the power. I mean, they like the ability to step in and tell people you can't do this or you can't do that. And I think part of it is if you don't do it as a leader, you get beat up. Look, I think the perfect example is New York and Florida. OK, Governor DeSantis and the state of Florida is often characterized in most of the legacy media as some sort of covid disaster. All right? right. But New York, who has less people than Florida, has more cases, more deaths. And nonetheless, uh, their governor wins an Emmy because of his press conferences. I mean, this is st stupid. And, and this is the kind of hypocrisy. Again, people see this stuff. It just and, is. And they realize it. All right. So um, we wanted to ask you about the Joe Biden interview with The New York Times. Uh, he hasn't even been sworn in yet. And he's already blaming Republicans for what he's not going to be able to get done. He says exactly how much he will get done will depend to a large degree on two things, Biden noted. One is how Republicans in the Senate and House behave once Trump is truly gone from power. And the other is how McConnell behaves if he continues to control the Senate. Your reaction? Yeah. Well, I think a lot of it will depend on by how Biden behaves. Is he going to sort of fall in line with the radicals in the Democratic Party that are already insisting that right out of the gate we do the clean, you know, the Green New Deal and all this other stuff? Or is he going to try to get things done um, that both sides can agree on? So it really a lot yeah. of it depends on what he seeks to prioritize and what he wants to do. Look, I'm going to be clear with you guys, and maybe some people watching are going to like it. I'm not just going to be against stuff because Joe Biden's for it. If it's something I'm for and he's for, I mean, my job is to do what's best for the country. Right. But we have to understand there are a lot of things that he's for that I'm going to be against. That's why I supported Donald Trump, and that's why I'm a Republican. And he's right. got a lot of people around him hey, who I are take, far hey, left and are going to push us in that direction. I'm not going to be for any of that stuff. And right. I'll just tell you that up front. I've never, I've never told anybody I'm, I'm a liberal Democrat. <laughs> uh, you're not going to be all happy with what he's going to do with Iran. He wants to get that deal back, and he wants to extend it. So he says, uh, I want to go right back to that deal and remove all the Trump sanctions. Uh, that sounds like a scary proposition. Yeah, again, I mean, you, he's surrounded by people and people in his orbit and people on his side of the aisle that the first thing they do is criticize Israel. Listen, over the weekend, we had three Democratic members of Congress attend an event put on by an organization linked to Hamas, clearly anti-Semitic. There were jihadist financiers at this event. You heard crickets, nothing, no reporting on it whatsoever. Who, who was it? Well, I don't know all three of their names, to, I guess, to leave. Um, uh, to be honest with you, I read the article, so I can't, I don't want to misstate who was right. there, but it was mm -hmm. to, Rashida Tlaib was one of them, and then I forgot who the other two were. But Shocker. nonetheless, they, they, it's widely reported. Well, I think uh, one of them, the, the one, one from Minnesota, I believe, took down the, the, um, her Twitter post about all of this. Look, again, no reporting about it whatsoever. Radical att an attendance at this radical event. It, it, it's not, it, it's the kind of stuff, and all of this going off media reporting, by the way, in some you know, outlets, but not in the widespread media. These are elements within the Democratic Party that are going to have a voice and are going to push the Democratic Party in a certain direction. So if that's the kind of stuff we see from a Biden administration, yeah, I'm going to be against it.